In my previous video I built this wooden bucket for my small dust collector and in this one I will focus on building the blower. So first of all I have to make a mounting flange for the impeller on this shaft. The cool thing is that the shaft has threads at the end and this would already be enough for making some kind of flange but this shaft also has a key and this mounting nut that fits over it and is held in place by a lock nut. And with this it's much easier to make some kind of solid mounting flange. My prototype consisted out of two discs, one fits perfectly on the shaft and one has a shape so the nut fits into it and these got screwed together on the shaft. Now for the actual flange I will use three discs which are then much bigger. To cut these out I used my x carve CNC that I got sponsored by Inventables. It doesn't really speed things up but it's very useful for cutting out the hexagonal shape for the nut. One of the discs I made with the bandsaw and that went a little bit faster. Ok the pieces are cut out, next I hammer in this nut. Then I could make a test fit, mark the hole positions, drill them and screw the pieces together. The third disc I glued on while leaving holes to be able to reach the screws behind it. Once dry I put it back onto the shaft. This flange now has quite a bit of wobble. But that's totally fine because now I will turn it through. The setup for turning is really simple. Everything is just clamped down and works like a lathe. As this piece spins quite fast you should make only light cuts. I managed to get a tolerance of about 5 one hundredth of a millimeter and then coated it with spray lacquer. While I was doing this, I let the CNC cut out the two impeller discs. These shapes might seem difficult to make without a CNC, but in another video I showed how you can make that. As the CNC was still running, I used the time and cut out all the veins out of 3mm MDF to size. So the CNC is finally finished after about 2.5 hours. I let it run pretty slow to get a nice uh, cut quality and I didn't cut all the way through into the waste board because now I want to cut them out and flush trim the leftover. Now the two discs are pretty much finished and the more or less tricky part is now how to get it centered on the flange. So let us CNC drill a little hole in the center of the disc and the motor shaft has a center indentation. Now I just take a small drill bit and line these two points up and that's it. And to keep track of the right orientation I make a small mark on the disc and the flange. Then without moving the disc I mark the hole positions, pre-drilled and screw the disc on. And that's running without vibrations so far, that's good. Next I need to put all these veins in between the discs and I already tried it out with some thinner ones and so I could work out a method that works reasonably well and doesn't require a bending form. Now I need to line up all these grooves with each other and somehow fix this top disc at a distance so that I can then slide in the veins. So I cut some spacer blocks that represent the thickness of the impeller and then I have to line up all the grooves with each other and I do this by putting some veins in just a little bit and I do this on multiple sides. In theory the discs are now lined up and I can clamp them together at the spacer blocks and then push in all the veins. That actually worked really well. Once they are all pushed in, you can remove the spacer pieces. Now my two discs actually are the bending form and I let them stay like this without glue for a few minutes so the veins are a little bit brought into shape and then it's easier to push them out again, put glue on and then push them in again with glue. Here you can see how they are slightly bent now. So then I put glue on and push them back in. This is the only tricky part of this build because it has to work on the first try. The glue will set up really quickly. 
A slow setting glue might be a good choice. Also make sure that the grooves are big enough. After removing some glue squeeze out, I clamped it and let it dry. Once dry, I cut off the excess with the bandsaw and circle chick and then sanded it flush on the disc sander. I put it on the motor and gave it a shot. Unfortunately, the motor was drawing about 1400 watts, but is only rated at 1000 watts, so it's overloaded. That means that the impeller is too big and I need to make it smaller. I make it smaller with the bands or circle jig, here I have the pivot point. These two double sided taped pieces maintain the spacing. And with this setup I can easily cut it smaller. This also results in really interesting off cut pieces. So I already reduced the diameter about 2 cm, but I'm still drawing 1200 watts. So before I make it even smaller, I first gonna balance it, because I guess a unbalanced impeller also draws more current than a balanced one. I balance it with a wooden dowel that sticks in the flange and the other side in the bearing. And I just spin it and wait until it settles at a heavy point. Okay, I had to glue in three counterweights to fully balance it and also shim here at the flange because the flange is not a problem. I turned it true and it runs true, but the plywood of the impeller didn't run all that true. After all, that reduced about 50 watts, not enough, so I had to make it smaller again. Now we are at a diameter of just under 34 centimeters and the motor is drawing about 1080 watts. I think this is alright. Okay, now that I know that the impeller is working, I can make the blower housing. But because the impeller is now a little bit smaller than I planned, I first have to change the size of the blower housing and then I can make it. I again let the CNC cut these shapes, but with one-to-one -one paper templates it would be just as simple. I also let it only cut halfway through so it doesn't take as much time. I then cut these shapes out and flush trimmed the rest. So now this is roughly the blower housing and as you can see the impeller fits into it. And this disc goes into the motor flange and then the impeller gets mounted on the motor and then this whole thing gets mounted in the blower housing with this disc. And to make this disc fit properly inside there I'm gonna use one of these rabbiting bits and make a rabbit on the disc and on the blower housing. And once that's done they should fit into each other and the surfaces should be flush. Okay, now this is working. Next I need to make the wall for the blower housing. And as I mentioned previously, I want it to be translucent. So for this material I first thought about just plexiglass. But as soon as you need it in a length that goes around the whole blower housing, it gets quite expensive because you have to buy a whole sheet. So I looked for an alternative and found this in the hardware store. This also is some kind of plexiglass or clear plastic. And you can just cut down a section that you need and this is just the right length. It's really thin, just 0.8 millimeters, but in a round shape it will be strong enough. For cutting the stuff I clamped it between two straight pieces and with multiple cuts I could achieve a really nice edge. Unfortunately one strip of this plastic is not quite enough to go all around the blower housing. So I need a second strip to cover up this last bit and then I have to overlap the joints. Okay, so the theory of this blower housing works out pretty well I think. But the tricky part now is how to actually put this together. So I marked hole positions every 5 cm and drilled them. Then I put in the first screw, wrapped the plastic around and while holding it under tension I put in a second screw. With just these two screws holding the wall under tension it's already stable. Alright, so far so good. Now I can put in the second plate and mount it the same way. Now to cover up the rest I have a smaller strip and it has to overlap the first one. To do this I use the same screw here. I just have to bring it into shape and secure it. Cool thing about this stuff is that it bends really really much so I can get in this tight radius.
Alright, this is looking pretty good so far. And now I'm gonna take it apart again to trim down all the pieces. And when I then put it back together, I also add some slow set epoxy on all the joints. I don't know if that helps much, but it can't hurt. While I had it taken apart again, I took that opportunity and coated all the inside surfaces as well as the impeller with polyurethane, so moisture and maybe water can't affect it. In the end, I think the epoxy wasn't necessary because with the screws it's already really strong and I will also seal it with silicone, which will also add a little bit of strength. And without epoxy you won't have to go through the trouble of putting it back together while taking care to not smear the epoxy around. Now because this is a wooden impeller it's not perfectly strong. So small pieces like these shouldn't pass it because they might damage it. So to prevent that from happening I'm gonna put this wire screen over the inlet. Some water stripping seals up this ledge. To keep the motor assembly in place I have carriage bolts sticking out the housing and then I made these pieces that fit over it and then with a washer and a knob I can tighten it. When all of these are flipped to the outside, I can still remove the whole assembly and I can fasten it without the need of tools. And it's alive! Seems to draw about 950 watts. So the question now is, how hard does it blow? Hmm, I think there's only one good test for this. <sighs> it blows hard. Suction is also pretty strong. I don't have tools or fixtures to actually measure anything yet. I might do this some other day. Alright, so the blower and the wooden bucket for my small dust collector are built. Next thing then would be the theme baffle separator and I will build this in my next video. So I let the CNC drill a little hole in the center. Next I need to put in all the veins that will make a... that will... <clears throat> Next I need to glue in... And I already tried it out with some thinner wen. <clears throat> Oh, it's really thin. Just point to it. Eh? Now I need to line up all these grooves. Grooves. These two pieces that I taped on there are there too. These two. It's really thin. Just 0.8 millimeters, but in a round shape, it will be strong enough. Now we are at a diameter of just under 34 centimeters. Yeah. Now we are at a diameter. Yeah. <laughs>